Hello everyone, this is Bradley. This is going to be the part 2 of pendulum wave animation using animation nodes. Last time we did the procedural modeling where you can control lots of stuff using animation nodes. Today I'm going to do the animation part. As I have mentioned in demo 2, here is a post about the pupil rigging. You can find this post from the link in the description. It's a post for Maya but the principle can be applied to any 3D or 2D software using sign function. The whole point is a very simple mathematical issue that if you translate z in sine and translate y in cosine, now you can drive a point along a circle. So the whole point is actually how to use that principle uh, applying to our pendulum wave animation. Uh, the essential idea is actually pretty simple. The ball is, while the ball is waving, uh, its actual movement is going around a circle. So this is the point. Uh, also, uh, in my free time, I actually updated this entire thing. I basically put the values, uh, make them procedurally. I have tilting instances, uh, hang and thickness, separation, all this kind of thing as I have done in the past. There's nothing fancy. Actually, it's more poor than the last time. Uh, I also put the volumetric lightings, uh, also kind of noise texture. One thing I would like to mention is uh, because this floor usually will go to infinity. Uh, so I make a kind of alpha gradient. So now you can see there is a very clear cutting edge, which is very ugly. So instead of I use an alpha, uh, plug the with gradient texture, set it to spherical. So now this entire sphere is kind of. So you can see this alpha map. And if you put that into alpha, and also turn on the alpha blend, then you won't see the cutting edge, it will go to infinity. Actually, uh, there's other methods to do such kind of work, like use volume absorption, but it will make the same too dark, so I'm not very happy with that. The setting is basically simple, ambient occlusion, balloon, and the screen space reflection, so on so forth. Okay, anyway, let's go to our animation node. So in order for our pendulum loads to move in a circular path, I need to know its origin and I also need to know its radius. To know the radius is essentially simple. So I basically need a vector distance and plug them plug the location into. And then because uh, we are go eventually we are going to make a different movement for all these kind of loads. So it would be better if we start to loop right now. And now I have the radius. And then I need to define the origin. So the origin is a vector list. And the origin is the upper point or origin. So now this is time. Uh, another thing I need you to be aware is now we are using a fixed uh, point from the spine to define the location of all these um, loads. But the later on, as we are going to animate them, the sphere and the string will all move. So I need to input a moving vector and connect this output to both of them. Uh, now we didn't define this vector, so that's why it runs crazy. It will be very simple fix. Uh, we just need a vector, a vector math. So we start from origin and subtract our radius on z axis and output it. Then the model goes to the same. The next step is how can we animate these things uh, in a circular path? So we basically need a float mass. So basically, it's just kind of replicate what has been said from the articles. You need a sine and you need a cosine. And I need a time info. Goes to A, goes to B. And then the issue is how can we combine all these things together? So now if I start with X and start with Z, let's see. The just having a very short circular path going circle. 
because the output the maximum output of sine wave is about one so what we need to do is basically vector mass to time all of these values with our radius so vector form value and now it's basically going a circular path oh i need to multiply so now it goes circular path this is not what we are looking for absolutely not what we are looking for this is very dumb this is also a kind of very interesting animation if we turn down the rate of animation uh, but uh, now we are working with pendulum wave so this is not what we are looking for so how can we actually deal with this uh, and basically since we are going to make this pendulum wave going back and forth so it's actually again a sine wave so we put a sine wave into a sine wave and now it basically works in terms of a sine wave and so that's, that's basically the idea mm. yes so that's it uh, now we're going to make a division to turn down the rate so you can divide with any numbers so now divided by 50 makes it looks kind of normal you can see the good part is, is no matter how you actually change the entire settings um, the ball still stays in the ground because that's how we set the entire setting and then the question is how can we actually um, make different uh, these balls moving a different uh, phase so one should uh, swing faster and the other should uh, swing slower in this case we need a delay time and I put the time in and put the time out so now they have the same delay uh, if we set a di different delay then we set the different phase for all of them um, to do that is also simple we need first need a float input uh, simply because I want to define this value uh, in a customizable way later like uh, using the viewport input and now I set the delay factor with 2 and see how it looks and then I need a uh, fold mass basically fold mass and multiply the index because the index varies from one object to the other so it's basically it starts from 0 and uh, goes to the end so now instantaneously we have the animation in different phase so up to this moment I think uh, the basic animation has been done uh, there are several important things that I want to mention is uh, firstly what we need to do is basically increase this entire timeline so that we can see this animation better and then go to the delay factor delay factor is very important because it decides um, the phase difference from one pendulum to the other pendulum if uh, the, the, there is no delay factor then everything will just uh, start at the same time but now if we increase this delay factor you can see the movement is tends to be a little bit jaggy because uh, if we you increase the delay factor it will um, cause the ball to move in the opposite direction compared to what it's doing right now so the correct way is actually to decrease this delay factor so that uh, instead of going backwards they are speeding up in their positive direction so it will kind of working kind of better and more realistic uh, because it, it, it's more kind of physics um, the shorter the radius uh, faster the movement they should be so this this is causing the phase difference and it can be exaggerated as the time goes on due to energy loss and so on and so forth
whatever. I'm not a physicist, so I can only roughly spoke the theory about that. So it will be better if you just decrease this delay factor. Okay. Uh, another thing is that because everything is operating on sine wave, so there is always a loop from 0 to 2 pi. So even if you your delay factor goes to negative 1000, uh, it's, it's still within the loop of 0 to 2 pi. It would not be very different from the others. It's, it's a loop, which also means now if you want to start with animation um, in a zero position, so how can you actually do this? Because now I'm starting from frame one, it has already been offset. Even if I start with zero frame, it's still offset. So how can we start with nothing? We need to, uh, the idea is pretty simple. We just need to start with everything at exactly zero within the sine wave. So what does it mean is firstly, we need a uh, basically full max and take a maximum. And we need to define this maximum to be the same number for all of them. So I need to multiply. And one number is the constant. And I need to make it 2 pi. Another is basically integral input. This integral input must be larger than this delay time. So now you can see the last number is 11. So just to take maybe 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9, 10. So let's just see their output. So now this is 94 until this number triggers 94 otherwise they will not move so it will actually take forever uh, actually not forever so let's just see so now their value is larger than 94 then the phase difference has been started so this is the point and this is how it works so there's a lot of things that you can tweak starting this and I think that's it. Oh, here's also one thing that I want to mention. Um, what if I want to change the magnitude of its sway? Uh, another point is because we are working with sine function, we're using a, an output from sine function to control the other sine and cosine, which means this value output will always between negative 1 and 1 and that's why uh, it only work with so many magnitude then let's uh, let's clean up this guy that's why it only goes up to that high but it has potential to go through the entire circle so what we can actually do is basically a, another false mass to multiply a number. So just to keep a just a for kind of idea, three point one four make it go through one entire circle, and definitely you can increase the number to go more circles, but it will definitely go crazy. Uh, but this is a way that you can change the magnitude to make it more clear to you. You can basically make a float mass with sine and so on. Um, like you can divide by sine or divide by pi. And use a number to control. Something like that. It's a, uh, it's just a one way of doing that. So increase the number, higher magnitude, or decrease the number, lower magnitude. Yeah, this is basic idea. I think uh, I've been, I think I finished everything. So let's turn on the scenes, and we have all this animation. 
and definitely you can customize all these delay factor later with the viewport input node but so far I only put these all these kind of two things you have the separations tilting as I mentioned at the beginning of this tutorial increase the instances kind of very interesting thing so I hope you enjoy this series of tutorial uh, definitely you can see the node tree has been much linear compared to what I've originally done but it's kind of still kind of a lot it's simply because so definitely you can see that the node tree has been much cleaner than what I showed it initially. The major reason is because I'm deleting many nodes which should be unnecessary and so on and so forth. And I'm even decreasing the amount of loop which is required in this entire situation. Anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed this series of tutorial and the concept is not only working for the pendulum wave, it can working with many many other things. So I hope you can also utilize the knowledge uh, to work with other stuff. So I'll probably see you next time. Bye bye.